Hello everyone. I guess everyone's talking about the fishing today, so I'm gonna add one more to the uh, presentation today. So my name is Kyung Chan Lim. I'm a PhD student from the University of Tennessee. Today I'm going to talk about the fishing versus legit, um, comparative analysis of client-side resources of fishing and target brand websites. This work was done by uh, me and uh, Jaewon Park and Professor Tuan King. So I'm sure everyone knows about the phishing attacks. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was looking at the cheat um, Also, um, phishing attacks are increasing and it's very severe and I I'm sure everyone knows about that. And also, um, it's increasing ever since it has launched and it can cost a lot of money if um, people get lured. And single attack may not cost a lot, but if um, it the attack is successful, many more victims will be lured. And phishing attacks increase, especially after the um, COVID pandemic. So phishing attacks make um, similar looking websites as, uh, as a Binam website. This is well known and all of us have seen these kind of websites. And from uh, previous um, presentation, only except one person um, wanted to put their information into the um, a phishing website, but I'm sure um, many people will fall into these phishing uh, attacks. So let's look at um, how phishing uh, um, attacks work. So first is uh, phishing attacker sends the phishing um, website link through the email or SMS message to the victims. Then the um, victims visit the legitimate looking website, which is a phishing website. Then the um, attacker collects the victim's credentials, such as uh, email address, password, or even the um, credit card informa information. Then the attacker uses those credentials to the legitimate website to monetize them. So at the end, the goal of the phishing attacker is to lure the victims by pro uh, providing the similar looking websites. So uh, this brought us the uh, our research question and how do phishing attackers um, create legitimate looking websites. And we assume that they may um, use the um, copy the client side resources uh, from the benign website and such as client size, I mean by the HTML, CSS or JavaScript libraries. So uh, there hasn't been any um, previous work that we found about the um, client side resources comparison between phishing website and um, benign website. So uh, these are three research questions we came up with. Um, first is uh, what kind of the client-side resources are used in a phishing website? And second question is then what kind of the JavaScript libraries are used in phishing websites? Since the JavaScript uh, JavaScript is one of the largest used in a fish, um, <coughs> client-side resources. And third question is how similar the phishing website and their corresponding uh, estimate target brand website. So to um, look at the uh, comparison between phishing and legitimate website, we start by collecting the phishing URLs. We um, leverage the um, APWG feed, which is called the um, Anti-Phishing Working Group. They collect the phishing URLs from their members. Um, they report uh, um, if it's a phishing. Then we collected our data set from 2021 to 2023 of the, uh, over two years of the time collection period. Uh, with those URLs, we access those uh, phishing website. Then we collected the client side resources, and we also took the screenshots to compare how they look at um, when we access those phishing websites. And of course, um, during the crawling, there are some um, network errors, um, so we remove any possible um, HTTP errors such as 404 um, errors, and it's nearly impossible to look. Um, all of our data set manually because we collected over 50 millions of the um, URLs. So we clustered our data set with uh, using the screenshot of our collection. And uh, we look at each of the cluster um, data set and we remove any error pages or blank pages to remove as much false positive as possible. Then we extract the um, client side resources from the phishing um, data set. Using, we use the Webalizer um, library and we also use the Python um, uh, parsing tool to um, extract the client side resources. Then we extract the top 100 target brand from the phishing, um, phishing website. Then we collect those um, benign target brand website from the archive.org. 
we collected um, same time period as a phishing website because we don't want to look uh, compare the phishing website from 2021 to today's um, Binan website. Mm -hmm. Then we did the uh, same method as we, uh, to extract the client side resources. Then we compare um, the client side resource between phishing and estimate looking website. Estimate website. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And these are just sample of the how a phishing website looks like on the uh, left side, uh, right hand side. And left hand side is an uh, example of from the archive.org. Mm -hmm. So this is the comparison method we used. Um, so the left hand side, the number three is from the pre previous slide. So uh, we took the uh, phishing website and we extracted the top 100 um, brands from the phishing website. Then uh, we collected the same domains from the waving machine from the archive.org. Then we uh, used the HTML similar, similarity comparison tool um, that can that looks into the DOM structure and the CSS um, styles of the um, HTML file. So at the end, we end up with um, over uh, 757,000 of domains to look at in the phishing, um, phishing websites. So to answer our uh, first research question, what kind of the, of the class of resources are um, used in a phishing website? Um, as I said before, JavaScript is of course used um, the most. However, the average usage is a little over 82%. And when compared to benign website, they are used well over 90% in a benign website. So I'll talk about this in a later slide as well. So uh, we moved on to the next um, second research question. So since JavaScript libraries are most used, and we want to see um, how they are used in a phishing website. First was to um, look at the um, versions of those libraries between phishing and legitimate website. So uh, interesting find finding is that we found that um, phishing websites uh, t uh, tend to use older versions of the um, same libraries when compared to the legitimate website. In this um, example case that um, bootstrap in the phishing um, websites, they, uh, the dominant version used in, uh, in the phishing is the 4.0, and the dominant version in a, a legitimate website was 5.0. We also find another um, interesting thing that um, in the phishing websites, there are some um, libraries that are only popular in phishing, or there are um, some libraries only shown in phishing. Uh, the usage is not uh, very high in here, but however, if the phishing, uh, the victim gets lured to the uh, phishing, phishing attacks, then the effect will be um, dramatic, no matter the coverage of the phishing website. So um, one of, we found one of the use case uh, of the uh, li library only used in a phishing website. So uh, this is a library called Axios. They um, can exfiltrate the user's information, such as an email password um, to the attackers. We also find another um, use case of the library, which is called Socket.io. So um, this library decodes the parameter of the URL and send, it, send the um, information directly to the server in a real time. So in a uh, HTML file, sometimes there are some URLs with the encoded parameters, but uh, when they're decoded, uh, sometimes they include um, user information, or even worse, they can include uh, ID and password. So another interesting finding is that, um, as we have seen from the previous slide, that JavaScript was only used um, a little over 82%. But um, then we were wondering what are the remaining percentage of the web, uh, phishing websites are using to make the phishing website. And we found that they are using prim primarily the CSS um, structures to mimic the login form. And even some websites are um, using plain image files um, to make the phishing uh, login forms. So um, we move on to the third research question and how similar are phishing websites and their um, le corresponding legitimate websites. So um, we found that they, the, our, uh, from the, our original research question that they may copy from the um, benign website, but we were wondering fr um, from our first um, analysis that they copy older, uh, they used older versions of the JavaScript library. So uh, we thought they may copy from the older versions of the B9 website. Um, so this is a, one of the examples showing that um, this Facebook phishing website on the right hand side was detected on July of 22, uh, 2022. And they uh, copied from the B9 website on um, 2018 of the January. So 
we took the top um, top ten target brands of um, from our data set, and uh, from our result, on average of the um, over 500, 585 days, older versions um, they're copying from. So um, how we did this is uh, we took the uh, first scene of the um, phishing website from our data set, um, and we found the um, closest looking data from the uh, our benign um, collection of the data set. And we run the HTML similarity tool to compare whether um, how similar they are. And this is one of the examples showing that um, the left hand side is a phishing website and right hand side is a benign website and they look exactly same, same and the uh, HTML similarity tool gave us a high um, similarity rate. So um, our takeaway is that phishing website um, often use the broader range of these JavaScript libraries than a legitimate website. And the second takeaway is that large proportion of the, these sites are still remain basic um, because they uh, only use without um, like dynamic uh, libraries uh, such as JavaScript libraries and just create the plain forms using the CSS or the image files. And our last takeaway is that phishing website uh, mimic um, from older versions and it is possibility that they can copy from the older versions of the benign website. And that's it for my presentation and thank you for listening.